Hello, amazing teachers. This is Jay Fulmer, and we're going to talk about the lesson for Hebrews 11, part one. The focus of the lesson is to help students understand what faith is and to get a richer understanding of it. The first part is for students to write down what they think faith is, and then to add to that as we go along. For example, reading Hebrews 11, 1, and now they can add to their definition, the things they've learned from that scripture. And then it has some additional scriptures here from Alma 32, Articles of Faith 4, that are going to teach some additional doctrines that can help to add to their definition of faith. One really important thing is it's not faith that we're talking about, it's faith in Jesus Christ that we're talking about. Now, as you go along, you'll also have a quote here from Elder Anderson and an opportunity for students to write down some answers to question prompts here. That's the overview of the lesson. Let me offer a couple of resources for you. As you get to this part in the lesson, there are some discussion questions right here. Let's take a look at a couple of things that we can do to help these to be more effective. First of all, how do you think having faith in Jesus Christ is different than having faith in someone else or something else? Remember, to generate a discussion, asking follow-up questions is really important. For example, you might say, tell me more about what you mean. So if we were to model this, we might say, how do you think having faith in Jesus Christ is different than having faith in someone or something else? Alan, what do you think? As we've invited a student to share his thoughts, make sure to validate the things that he says. Perhaps he says something like, having faith in Jesus Christ is different because we know that he has power to be able to help us in the things that are challenging. Now, as a teacher, we'll respond, great insight, Alan. Thank you for that. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you mean? For the second question, I think it reads a little bit awkward. How might your faith in Jesus Christ help you to trust him when you're faced with questions or uncertainty? I would break this question into two parts. The first is to get students thinking about the situation. You might say, think of a situation in which you might be faced with questions or uncertainty. At this point, you might want to ask students to think of some specific examples. This is a great way to prime the pump for the question. Perhaps students might bring up coming across information on the internet, which is um, antithetical to the church. They wouldn't use the word antithetical, but you know what I mean. YouTube videos or class discussions that talk in a positive way about things that we understand to be sinful, or maybe encountering a tragedy or suffering in life. Once you've made a short list of those things, then ask the question, how might your faith in Jesus Christ help you trust him in these situations. I hope you'll find those tips useful as you help facilitate a discussion with your students. But there's something else that I wanted to offer. This idea of understanding the definition of faith is such a great one that I have some presentation slides you could insert right at this point in the lesson. Now, this is just if it could be useful for your class, the rest of this material is great, but let me offer this if it could be useful. In the scripture helps at the bottom of the lesson, it includes verses in Alma 32, and this verse in particular is included in the lesson. At this point, we would have already explored this verse, but let's just review this concept. Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge. And then share the quote from Elder Neil L. Anderson. Faith does not fall upon us by chance. He talks about how it is a choice. We choose to believe. Faith is not by chance, but by choice. To explore that idea a little bit further, we could tell students that in order to have a choice, you need to have a compelling reason to believe and a compelling reason not to believe. In this way, we should understand that we should expect there to be compelling reasons to believe in the Book of Mormon or the Bible or God. But there should also be compelling reasons not to believe. Otherwise, we don't have a choice. 
For example, I don't have a compelling reason not to believe in gravity. As a matter of fact, most of my childhood has testified clearly to me that gravity, it's a real thing. Even this year, as we've learned about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we find an example of that. When Christ was resurrected, the guards, the Roman guards at the tomb, came and told the chief priests who bribed them and told them to tell everybody that the followers of Christ had actually broken into the tomb and stolen the body of Jesus away and then pretended that he was resurrected. And that became the official state position. So, here's our choice. Many locals testified that they had seen the resurrected Christ. There's a compelling reason to believe. But the official story from the Roman guards, essentially the state story, was that it was a scam. Well, there's a compelling reason to not believe. And now it's up to us to choose. So, when we incorporate the teachings in Alma 32, verse 27 tells us that we need to do an experiment if we want to know which direction to go. First, we plant a seed. Now, remember, the seed is not faith. It is the Word of God. We plant the Word of God, and then as we nourish it, we see what it does. And we find that it swells within us, it enlarges our soul, enlightens our understanding, and becomes delicious to us. Then we know it's a good seed, or that the Word is good, and it strengthens our faith. We now have an increased reason to believe, and a decreased reason not to believe. And that's the journey of faith. Later in that chapter, Alma says, Oh, then, is not this real? I say unto you, yea, because it is light, and whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore, ye must know that it is good. So if you decide to use that, I would insert it right here, and you could even ask some of these questions that are here, and then give students a chance to talk about these questions uh, or, or write about them in their scripture journal. Here again is the reference, if you want to use those scriptures that we just talked about. Faith is such an important principle, and this is such an important topic. You're going to have a great time talking with your students about this first principle of the gospel.